Bonjour YouTube. On se retrouve pour ce qui va probablement être l'épisode final euh, du Let's Play d'Elblade. Et on se retrouve à la fin. Euh, on fera juste derrière un épisode pour le documentaire. Et encore après, on fera une critique sur une vidéo euh, dédiée euh, du jeu, de pourquoi on aime le jeu, pourquoi tout ça. Voilà, en attendant, on profite les gens. A tout à l'heure. We'll all die someday. I don't, I don't want to die. die. And when everyone's gone, even the gods will die. We don't want to die. I don't want to die. Senua, stop. Senua. Turn back. Stop. Stop her. Stop. Senua, stop. Senua, stop. Senua, stop. Senua, stop. What happens to us? Stop her. Why would she stop to die? She stop. 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 I'm sorry. I didn't ask you to be a part of me. If you don't want to die with me, then leave me alone. I don't want to die. Please stop. 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 You'll never come back if you go there. There is nothing to go back to. We only have each other now. Don't abandon me. Everyone suffers. They were right about me. Send them. Listen to me. Not them. They were afraid. Like children scared of the dark. So was I. They made up monsters to fill the void. That doesn't make them real. She has nothing to fear in her. The gods have saved your mother. Through my hands. You killed her. 
This is the will of the gods. Fuck the gods! You did this to her! Why? This is what happens when you listen to the voices of the underworld. They crawl into your soul and rot you from the inside. Defy the gods like your mother, and the darkness will come for you, too. You understand, son.
I can see through your darkness. You're a liar and a murderer. And if you really are Hela, then I have a sword here that can kill a god.
you want me to believe? After all you've done to me? And to him? You're not a lie, but you're a liar! You crawled into me to confuse me and deceive me. But I know it. I know you have him. I learned the hard way to not be afraid of death, Zeno. Because a life without loss is one without love. You turn your back on death, and all you can see is the shadow that it casts. The longer you hide from it, the longer the shadow grows until all you can see is darkness. When our time comes, we must look death in the eye and embrace it as a friend. Only then can we let go of our fear. And emerge from our darkness.
Never forget what it is like to see the world as a child, Senua. Every autumn leaf is like a work of art. Every rolling cloud a moving picture. Every day a new story. We too emerge from this magic, like a wave from the ocean, only to return to the sea. of this world never leaves us. It is always there, waiting to be seen again. further than this. Follow us. We have another story to tell. My friend, go with her. This now will be your story to witness. sur cette chanson pop euh, douteuse <rire> c'est la fin d'Elblade euh, une fin que je trouve partiellement mémorable je suis pas super fan de de la toute toute fin là avec la promesse d'une suite machin bon c'est anecdotique dans la au sein de la réussite que je considère total du jeu euh, et de ses, et de sa narration euh, où il y a sur, sur laquelle il y, y a énormément de, de choses à dire mais est-ce que ce serait pas l'opportunité est-ce qu'on peut zapper ça putain on ne peut pas zapper le générique Michel c'est emmerdant <rire> Euh, parce que je me disais qu'on quitte à faire un épisode d'une heure, une heure et demie, autant aller euh, faire euh, regarder le documentaire direct euh, sur cette vidéo là, c'est ce qu'on va faire je pense si le, si le générique dure pas mille ans. Alors il y a beaucoup de choses à dire, je développerai euh, les, les, les points que, que je considère le plus important dans, le, dans la critique. De ce qu'on peut dire là euh, à chaud. Euh, il y, a, il y a énormément de choses à dire. Le, la première des choses à dire, c'est que, et c'est ce que je considère comme étant le plus remarquable dans le jeu, c'est qu'il détourne des, des codes cinématographiques, le fameux langage cinématographique, le découpage cinématographique, la technique cinématographique. Mais il n'oublie pas d'être un jeu vidéo. Et, il oublie, et ce qui est d'autant plus remarquable, c'est qu'il n'oublie pas d'être un jeu vidéo alors que sa partie gameplay n'est pas très élaboré. Euh, C'est peut-être le plus gros point faible du jeu. Euh, en 
ce sens que il tire parti de la narration visuelle mais, mais dans, des, dans des proportions assez faibles finalement euh, puisque la principale partie narrative est auditive et sonore euh, avec cette espèce d'ASMR euh, de 7 heures là euh, la, la partie de gameplay consiste à simplement des, des, des puzzles qui sont des, des espèces de miroirs de la, de la psyché de, de Senua c'est relativement intéressant mais le problème c'est que ça ne se renouvelle pas du tout jamais il y a quatre euh, il y a quatre types de puzzles il y a les, les portails qui permettent d'ouvrir de, de sur une autre dimension il y a les le point de vue qu'il faut adopter pour pouvoir reconstituer un élément du décor. Euh, voilà, bon, il y a quelques trucs comme ça. Ça va jamais très loin. Mais ça reste dans le, ça, une cohérence globale euh, avec la, la narration auditive euh, qui indique toujours ce qu'il faut faire. Et il y a une espèce de, de simplicité narrative. Euh, qui va droit au but tout en détournant, comme je le disais, les, les, les codes cinématographiques. Et là où c'est le plus remarquable, et là où le, le, en, ce en quoi le jeu est extrêmement bien écrit, c'est l'alternance des points de vue. J'en ai déjà parlé euh, succinctement dans d'autres vidéos. Le point de vue en narration, c'est quelque chose de très important. Euh, c'est quelque chose qu'il faut savoir faire. On peut adopter plusieurs points de vue euh, sans avoir différents narrateurs. Bon. Là, c'est un peu plus compliqué, mais le, la notion de point de vue ici est vraiment très très importante. Globalement, on, on peut considérer qu'on joue une, une espèce de voix de raison de, de, de Senua dans son, dans son périple psychique. <rire> et, 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 et de ce point de vue-là, le joueur est confronté à, à toutes les autres, euh, aux autres points de vue euh, qui vivent en Senua. Et on se bat contre ces différents points de vue, on s'allie à ces différents points de vue. Et le jeu prend un malin plaisir à brouiller les pistes, euh, notamment avec les codes cinématographiques, notamment un qui est vraiment très important à décrypter, c'est euh, les plans face caméra de Senua, qui s'adresse toujours face caméra, souvent du moins face caméra, mais pas toujours à la même personne, et c'est là qu'intervient qu l'importance des points de vue dans la narration pour permettre l'immersion du joueur et son implication dans l'objet vidéoludique. Et c'est cette alchimie-là qui permet d'avoir une un langage vidéoludique et non pas cinématographique. C'est vraiment la nuance qui est importante. Euh, un peu à la manière de Soma, mais d'une manière différente. Puisque ce noix, lui, rajoute le langage littéraire par-dessus ça. Euh, le jeu arrive à, à, à confondre différents éléments pour rester de, de A à Z un jeu vidéo malgré le fait que c'est grosso modo un, un walking simulator euh, qu'il n'y a pas d'éléments de gameplay narratif un peu à la manière de, de Dark Souls par exemple où le jeu s'inspire euh, en petite partie de Dark Souls sur la, la partie combat mais euh, L'allégorie du cheminement du joueur dans Dark Souls est beaucoup plus poussée qu'ici. Euh, même s'il y a une, une relation entre le, le périple de Senua, les, les ennemis qu'elle affronte et le, et, le, et, le, et le point de vue du joueur. Bon, ça, ça je développerai ça de manière un peu plus précise dans, dans la critique. Ce que je propose, euh, bah, c'est qu'on aille directement dans le documentaire. Euh, on est à 38 minutes, même si la vidéo fait 1h40, c'est pas grave, comme ça on aura un package complet pour la dernière vidéo. Euh, voilà. Bon, alors, si je trouve un truc intéressant à dire, je sais pas si je me souviens plus si on peut faire pause durant le documentaire, eh bien je me permettrai d'intervenir ou de, ou de faire pause s'il y a un truc qui me semble important à... S'il y a un truc qui me semble important d'en discuter, enfin... On verra bien. Tac. Alors par contre je pense que c'est en... Non c'est en français, c'est sous-titré français Oui on peut faire pause pendant le machin Donc c'est parfait, je vais me taire Et si je trouve un truc intéressant à dire Je ferai pause A tout à l'heure les gens Stormy seas and lost souls Who is it? She's dreamt of this before It's coming Is it? Is it? Is it? They say 
dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts, and fears, as seen by our inner eye. What if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake? And we only see what our inner eye creates for us. Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares. Maybe that's why people fear seeing the world through our eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is a video game about Senua, a Celtic warrior on a vision quest into Viking territory. But what sets our hero Senua apart is that she suffers from severe psychotic mental illness. The original idea for Hellblade was to create a classic hero's journey, a journey of suffering, but one where the fantasy world is not another planet or alternate universe, but a world that is constructed in Senua's mind. But to do so would mean putting psychotic mental illness at the center of the experience, a subject that is still considered taboo, and a challenge that was both terrifying and exciting in equal measure. In Hellblade, the starting point was a newly discovered Celtic goddess called Senuna in Ashwell, Hertfordshire. When first discovered, her name was thought to be Senua, a name which I liked and kept. I wondered if Senua might have been a Celtic warrior like Boudicca, who stood up to the Romans. While the Romans had conquered all of Europe, there was a group of Celts up in the furthest reaches of the Roman Empire that could not be conquered, the Picts. And so the Romans built a wall, called Hadrian's Wall, that spans across Britain from sea to sea to keep the Pictish barbarians at bay. The Picts were known for their war paint, painted on with woad, and their matted hair clumped with lime. And so Senua would be a barbarian Pict in this image. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I don't live home much. Oh, Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait! Orkney is off the coast of Scotland and was inhabited by the Picts, steeped in history and mystery, and so I made Orkney Senua's home and set the stage for a crisis. In the late 8th century, the first Vikings landed on the Orkney Islands. The population of the Picts crashed thereafter, replaced by the Norsemen of the 9th century. Were they wiped out? We don't know for sure, but it would seem likely given the reputation of the Vikings. The Northmen's brutality is legendary. High-ranking leaders and chieftains of the tribes they conquered were often offered as sacrifice to their gods. The most brutal of these sacrifices was known as the Blood Eagle. I imagine Senua as a young female warrior who returns home from exile to find her partner, Dilia, brutally sacrificed to a Norse god by these hellish warriors from a faraway land. I imagine the horror of this moment and how it would have dragged her deep into mental torment. to learn that the Celts had a sophisticated and nuanced perspective on the nature of mental disorder. One term they used was gelt. A gelt is a man or woman who has been driven mad by a curse, battle trauma or grief. The gelt would take to a life in the woods in search of penance, punishment and purgation. And so Senua became a gelt, cursed by darkness, looking for redemption in the wilds. Another word the Celts used in reference to mental disorders was truth, meaning fool, or liar, one who utters the words of God. 
They tell of the mad sinner who flees battle into exile and takes on a beastly nature, growing feathers on his body. A character called Ruth in Hellblade is based on a little-known person called Findan, an 8th century Irish Celt who was captured and enslaved by the Vikings, but eventually escaped to Orkney where he became a monk. I will tell you my stories of hell, if I may walk with you. Upon meeting Senua, it would be his stories that fuel her quest deep into their world of gods. The Northmen say the world will come to an end. The sun will grow black, the earth will sink into the sea, the stars will disappear, fire and water will meet, flames will play against the sky, the heavens and earth and all the world will be burned, all the gods will be dead, and the warriors of Valhalla and people everywhere. For it is nigh. So the stage was set for a new adventure, a journey into the Norse underworld called Hell, a vision quest fueled by madness and myth, a fantasy that was created by Senua's own mind, and one that we would experience through her eyes. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left. To make a game about a warrior with psychotic mental illness as its central theme was fraught with danger. Mental illness such as psychosis is still taboo and rarely acknowledged in a century of cinema, never mind the new medium of games. Where it does feature, it often conflates psychosis and psychopathy associated with a lack of empathy. It is unfortunate that these two words sound so similar that they are used interchangeably in media. I must admit that I didn't have to look very far to discover my own ignorance of the subject. So we reached out to Paul Fletcher, psychiatrist and professor of health neuroscience at University of Cambridge. Psychosis is a descriptive term and it refers to um, having a loss of contact with objective reality. So it's characterized by uh, two main sets of symptoms. One of them is hallucinations where somebody experiences perceptions when there is no actual objective thing out there to perceive. Who are you? And the other is delusions where somebody comes to very often bizarre, unpleasant, frightening beliefs when there's no good evidence in favor of them. There's no doubt about it. The source of the darkness is in Helheim. And the goddess Hela holds his soul there. We reached out to Welcome, a biomedical research charity that spends billions on research and awareness programs aimed at improving health. Mental health hasn't always been presented in the media in a way that is particularly helpful. Um, it can be challenging to engage people with the subject matter and there are a lot of preconceived ideas about mental health and particularly schizophrenia and psychosis. So we hope our support allows the team to continue to collaborate with Paul Fletcher and with those who have experience of psychosis to create a game that provides a fresh perspective on the condition and allows audiences to engage with it in a way that just wouldn't be possible in any other medium. What started out as a brief consultation convinced me that we were only scratching the surface of an immensely deep and interesting subject that could enrich and change the very nature of the game. That's cool, well, thanks so much. Cool. Yeah. Pleasure, thanks. Uh, it's really interesting for me. I'd love to be involved. I think it's fascinating. Yeah. Our understanding of psychosis is still very much a mystery and ways of treating it are still primitive compared to physical illness. After all, it is easy to see the pain and suffering caused by physical diseases or physical trauma it is not so easy to see the mental suffering and trauma of severe mental illness. But what if we could find a way to see it? Games are capable of drawing you in for hours on end, playing the role of a character who is different from you, experiencing their perspective, and actively involving you in a world that functions with a different set of rules. If we were to represent Senua's psychosis, we would have to simulate voice hearing, a common attribute. But how can we simulate something we have no first-hand experience of? Professor Charles Fernyhoe, a leading expert in voice hearing from Durham University, offered his help. Hearing voices is an experience that is usually associated with severe mental illness. And crucially, we know that hearing voices is a part of ordinary life for many people who don't meet the criteria for mental illness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's not him in real life. We know voices vary according to where they appear in space. Voices can appear far away in the distance, they can appear right there in your ear, they can seem to be coming from inside your head. 
Based on the information Professor Fernie Ho provided, I put together a sound brief and invited some actors to the studio. We recorded the actors using a binaural microphone, which records the 3D spatial position of sound, replicating the way sound is heard by human ears. It gives you an incredible sense that the person you are listening to is right there beside you. Rachel Waddingham from The Voice Collective came to our studio with two young voice hearers to speak to our team. We talked at length about their experiences and they listened to our tests, giving us feedback on how we could improve on it. Everyone hates her. She's cursed. It's very hard to represent what this experience is like, partly because it's such a personal, intense, emotional experience. It's testament to how ninja theory have been listening to what the researchers are saying, but also, crucially, listening to the experts by experience. What they've come up with is so compelling. It's by far the best representation I've heard of what these experiences are like. Other common attributes of psychosis are visions and flashbacks. We met with Recovery College East, who work with and care for people recovering from severe mental disorders. A group of service users gave us their first-hand account of what they experience. Sometimes when the, the vision or the, what we're seeing is too much, we become small to until eventually we crack virtually anything. The people we spoke to, the stories they told, were fascinating, harrowing and mind-boggling. The reality of what people experienced was vivid, far exceeding what I could possibly have imagined. We went away itching to represent some of these visions and flashbacks in the game. Passville now my heart is so, love is so far away. Don't you know how I want to feel deeper? I could never know how you grow, all these days are killing me. Now I see deep in me insanity the sun falls I just wanna feel, I just wanna feel deeper, deeper I just wanna feel, I just wanna feel deeper, deeper To refine our work, we continued to hold meetings with Recovery College East over the course of a year and a half, showing them what we had achieved so far and refining the in-game representations based on their feedback. With their help, flashbacks, visions and changes in perception were woven into the story and gameplay of Senua. The students that are involved in this project are incredibly excited about being involved. They have described the experience as being important because it values their lived experience and shows that despite what we have been through, all of that experience becomes valid, that actually um, it's something that we should all be talking about. The experiences described range from beautiful to frightening beyond comprehension. I heard of a girl who has to live with an angry voice screaming at her, slamming on her doors and walls 24 hours a day. I met someone who would often see hanging corpses in a room, so real that she would sometimes try to rescue them. The panic and fear that comes with such visions is entirely understandable and it can be a living horror for some. Worthless, weak, pathetic. <laughs> Go on, feel sorry for yourself because there is no one left to do that for you. I was urged by one fellow that we should not shy away from showing this horror. And so I was perpetually torn in making Hellblade. Had we gone too far with our representations or not far enough? <laughs> Broke and <laughs> lost. Just Do like it. your sword. Come on. Death. <laughs> 
some ways, voice hearing and visions were the low hanging fruit, so to speak. There's another aspect of psychosis that is much harder to explain, but one that I think video games are uniquely able to represent, which are often called delusions. People begin to see patterns in the world. They begin to link things that most people wouldn't link. Most of the things that we might think would be coincidence or you know, not worth commenting on, nevertheless that might have a particular salience or importance for them. One individual described how everyday words, sounds, colours and objects were steeped in meaning to him forming a strange and sinister puzzle that he was determined to solve but could not quite get to the bottom of. It's not just brain dysfunction, it's not, it's not like the system shut down, it's actually an incredibly creative process. The person creates a world populated with voices and phantasms and terrors and they're completely immersed in it, they believe in it. We often invite people into the studio to play the game. In one of our playtests, they played through much of the game making associations between runes, secret messages and the threat of darkness that stalked them. There are many things that happen in the world of Hellblade that make perfect sense within the context of Senua's mind. The dark rot that's killing her slowly from within, the secret runes of the gods that block her path to Helheim, and strange associations that exist in the game to confuse you. To complete Senua's quest, you have to internalize and accept the logic and meaning behind these things to progress. Afterwards they said that they didn't see much evidence of mental illness in the game. People with delusions of all sorts would argue the same thing, that they are not aware of their experience being abnormal in any way. I need this sort. It's important. Representing perception changes and thinking patterns within Hellblade gives us a set of symptoms common in psychosis. But people with lived experience were keen to emphasize another point, that it is wrong to define a person by their symptoms. Quite often, the illness comes not from the symptoms, but from the stigma, isolation and mistreatment that comes about from the rest of society. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? I needed someone to portray Senua, someone who could believably internalize her suffering. Melina Jürgens, our video editor, had been a stand-in for Senua over a few months while we perfected our motion capture techniques. Without realizing it, she had already auditioned for the role, and I knew her well enough to know that I didn't have to teach her to act, but to relive her own internal pain. As often is the case, those who have suffered mental anguish are never far from us. <laughs> My hope is that by creating a compelling and aspirational character in Senua who feels very much real, albeit in a fantasy setting, we can provide a lens into her reality, a different one to yours, and this is where storytelling comes into play. I imagined her life based on common threads in real people's lives. She was always prone to psychosis as a child. Her mother Galena also heard voices and had visions, so perhaps there was a genetic aspect. Or perhaps it was cultural as she lived within a world without science, of gods and superstition, as exemplified by her druid father Zimbal. Psychosis developed in her late teens to early twenties and was exasperated by stigma and isolation at the hands of the clansmen and her father. This darkness, it's spreading. The trauma of seeing her lover Dillian sacrificed tips her over the edge, making her remodel her reality around a concept that connects everything. The darkness. So the question, is what Senua experiences real? Can only be answered by saying, yes, it is real. It is her reality. All of her suffering will have been for nothing. It's just a matter of time. Towards the end of the project, service users and professionals that had collaborated with us were invited to see the near final game. It was a chance to see if the game had reflected their views or if it had misrepresented them. For me, being involved in especially developing Senua's character has been really important and being able to bring in my perspective and, and what I see and what I hear and having that built into the game has been a real privilege. It's gritty and it's meaty and there are some tough subjects in there that are being tackled with honesty.
I was blown away by it today, absolutely blown away. It was just fantastic to get the opportunity to use our lived experience in a very creative way. There's nothing tokenistic about the work we've put in. It feels like we've, we've been listened to, um, things have been taken on board and I think there was a lot of realism in the, in the game itself and it feels very authentic. Hellblade will give people a good experience of what it's like to hear voices and, and have those experiences. I'm glad that um, the guys at Ninja Theory kind of asked us to come along and, and help help them build an experience that's positive when it comes out and get myself a copy and have a go. I think all the way through I was really inspired by how the conversations have translated into the game in a way that I think I didn't imagine was possible, so wonderful, really wonderful. I really hope that others will follow the lead they've set and use the power of something like a video game to change people's perceptions, to increase understanding, and ultimately to make some of the stigma around voice hearing and other experiences go away. For me, it was really exciting to see um, something that I explore scientifically being represented so beautifully in a character who's trying to penetrate the, the mysteries of the environment in which they've been placed with all of this strange uncertainty and noise and, and conflicting information that they're getting. I'm very excited by this way of trying to represent mental illness because I, th I think it actually might be offering us insights that we wouldn't get from you know, pure scientific explorations and actually giving us quite an empathic view of what it might be like. Mental illness has been with us for as long as we have been on this planet, but why? Why has an evolution stamped out this weakness from within our gene pool? I often pondered this question until I realized that the question had an inbuilt flaw. It assumes that being and thinking differently is a weakness. The only reason we have computers, spacecraft, medicine, poetry, art, and yes, even video games is because individuals were able to simulate new abstract realities in their minds and share them with the rest of us. We need people to be willing to see differently in order for us to progress and survive as society. And we need to be open to these new ways of seeing. And it is this spirit that motivated me to create Zen of a Story and share it with you. Bon bah documentaire qui est plus court que ce, que je, ce dont je me souvenais mais qui n'en est pas moins intéressant pour autant euh, je vais baisser le son euh, c'est là ferme ta gueule merci Michel euh, oui donc un document qui est très intéressant pas tellement pour la, la partie marketing et propagande de notre jeu il est bien et il est arcade perfect euh, bon c'est un making of donc c'est c'est de la promo, hein. euh, mais sur le, il, il est intéressant sur la vision de, du créateur et des développeurs, euh, sur la façon d'en de, faire un objet qui dépasse le cadre de son média, et c'est tout le sujet du jeu vidéo. Je le répète encore une fois, c'est ça l'important, c'est de la, la manière dont le jeu vidéo en tant qu'objet entend se épouser son média ou son médium, peu importe si on parle français ou anglais. Euh, la façon dont il, il, il essaye de transcender sa nature. Et là, avec Hellblade, on a littéralement, véritablement un, un exemple assez, assez parlant. Euh, 
de la façon dont toutes ces de, de la façon dont il est construit pousse à à raconter euh, à faire vivre un un état et ça c'est et, et, et par euh, l'utilisation de différents points de vue on l'a vu euh, la narration visuelle auditive euh, il emprunte des codes un peu partout et, et et ce melting pot en fait ben permet de d'avoir une de, de, de créer un langage qui est exclusif à l'objet et c'est vraiment ça l'important c'est de fait il transcende son sa condition et donc il dépasse son média il crée un langage et de ce fait c'est la définition de l'art euh, et, et, et en ça la narration de, de, de ce jeu est exceptionnelle pas dans le sens où elle est, for elle serait forcément meilleure que dans tout un tas d'autres jeux, mais exceptionnelle au sens littéral. Euh, ce jeu, la façon dont on nous le raconte, la façon dont on le vit, la façon dont on y joue quelque part aussi, euh, reste une exception euh, et euh, dépasse de la norme. Et c'est en ça que c'est un objet extrêmement intéressant, nonobstant toutes ses qualités... Euh, euh, visuel, euh, de direction artistique, de narration, euh, le plaisir de la découverte, euh, la satisfaction que peuvent engendrer la réussite d'une énigme ou d'un combat. Euh, C'est vraiment ça le, le, le cœur de Delblade et ce en quoi il est différent des autres jeux. Alors après, ça aurait pu rester une simple note d'attention, mais je trouve que le jeu... Euh, réussit son examen, il transforme l'essai comme on dit et, à sens, euh, et en ce sens là c'est un, un jeu marquant je sais pas si on peut parler de grand jeu euh, c'est le temps généralement qui permet de dire si un, si un jeu a, a marqué non pas son époque mais son, son média moi je pense que qu'il qu va marquer euh, durablement euh, mais ça restera peut-être un one shot, il n'y aura peut-être pas d'autres jeux euh, qui reprendront son, son héritage. A mon avis, il faut s'attendre à une suite. Est-ce que le studio réussira à, à reproduire ou même à faire encore mieux J'en ai aucune idée, ça me paraît difficile. Euh, parce que ce qui est intéressant aussi dans la façon dont il épouse son média, dont il le transcende, dont il casse les codes, euh, ce sera désormais attendu et il peut y avoir une la tentation de la surenchère, de la euh, du surplus. Et à ce moment-là, euh, si la démarche n'est pas authentique, si la démarche n'est pas bien réfléchie et n'a pas de d'autre but que de faire mieux. Eh bien, on peut perdre, euh, on peut, on peut, on peut, on peut perdre les pédales et, et du coup le, le langage euh, du jeu peut se, se trouver euh, euh, mal utilisé euh, ou, ou on peut tout à fait utiliser, enfin, se retrouver dans cette figure où le, le, le langage narratif du jeu va se retrouver, vous voyez, hors sujet. Euh. Donc c'est un risque. Euh, je sais pas ce que ça va donner. C'est pas tellement là. La question, ce sera à voir. Mais on va développer ça dans la critique plus globale du jeu. Euh, on va faire une critique au pif, euh, dans laquelle on abordera non seulement ces, ces thématiques-là, mais également bah, la, la partie un peu plus terre-à-terre, terre, hein, la partie technique, euh, visuelle, le gameplay, etc., ce qu'on en a pensé. Euh, voilà. On se donne rendez-vous très vite, YouTube. T'as vu les gens <rire>